Hey friends, it's Ariel. <clears throat> so I wanted to update you. Um, on Monday I went to the geneticist and at UC Davis and she did give me my diagnosis finally. <laughs> Which um, there's sort of a couple options when it comes to hypermobility and um, there's hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and there's hypermobility spectrum disorder, which um, are basically the same thing, but the diagnostic criteria for hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome has a few more uh, characteristics of connective tissue disorders, um, such as Marfan Syndrome and stuff, uh, things like mitral valve prolapse and um, aortic root dilation and pathogenic papules and some things like that. Uh, it's okay if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, I didn't have enough of those characteristics to fit the criteria, so I have hypermobility spectrum disorder is what they now, the category they put you in. Um, that was all changed in 2017. So anyway, um, most people don't even know that name exists. Basically, it's... Um, the same problem though, it's just that uh, they're trying to weed out people that are they're sure have the genetic version of EDS so that they can um, find the biomarker for this type of EDS. Um, so anyway, mine is hypermobility spectrum disorder, um, but in terms of what it means, it means the same thing, which is that I have defective collagen and uh, that my joints um, I have had so much joint pain for so long and I've just like, it's been one of those things. Yeah. I mean, it's been crazy. Can you imagine like in a month I'll be 40, like <laughs> it's taken me this long to get this diagnosis. And I was having problems with this from like, I remember age five or something. I mean, we're, we're talking like, it's the kind of thing that when people don't know what's wrong, they just kind of say like, oh, well, that's interesting. Hmm, there's nothing we can do about that. Hmm, like literally I have gone, I have, I have so many things that have happened and every time it was just like, uh, you know, I, I have so many things that were injuries and non-injuries, like things that happened that then it's almost like it becomes an injury. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, it's like with your ankles, when they're super loose, then you sprain them when you are playing soccer, you know, or dancing, you know, it's like, it's just, it's, uh, it's these interesting different things. And, um, sort of even things that I had sort of, you know, forgotten about like because honestly I feel like when you have a lot of medical neglect and a lot of which you know just without a diagnosis and without a reason for things doctors and every person just says oh well you know um, when I tore my shoulder I was lying on my right side and I was having seizures so three different nights I had a tonic clonic seizure like in a month in a row three months in a row and so I tore the capsule on my shoulder like one at night and it was so painful oh my god that was just like one of the most horrific pains to wake up to um, however I have to say the horror of waking up to having had a grand mal seizure and having you know bitten my tongue and bleeding and having turned blue and lost oxygen and um, you know like uh, in this case tore my shoulder and uh, I would have the most horrible headache and just feel awful and I would wake up and I would immediately just start bawling because I was so upset that it happened again which I've had over a hundred of those so I guess you can imagine at some point it just gets upsetting but it feels very violating and it felt like I'd wake up and somebody had beat me up pretty much because that's pretty much what had happened. My body was just like beat up. And um, so the, you know, that time when I tore my shoulder, right, nobody ever did anything about it um, because we couldn't afford like 
to look at it besides getting an x-ray, which an x-ray didn't show anything because a torn capsule is not going to show up in an x-ray. Um, so for seven years I had a torn capsule and continued to try to work and do everything and um, dance and uh, act normal. And except that I knew that I had a shoulder injury that I had to be careful of and so I didn't lift things with that arm that were too heavy and stuff like that. But I was in a huge amount of pain all that time. And then um, when I was at college I finally had better health insurance and I went and to the shoulder doctor and he looked at it and had an MRI and he did surgery on it. So he did a posterior bank art which is the sewing up the capsule in the back and he did it arthroscopic and it was really great. I was really really liked him and um, he did a good job but he said when it was in the recovery room when he came out he said and I was like why did he tell me this in there like I was half asleep you know but basically he said okay I sewed up the capsule um, like that's what I can do but just so you know when you were out I could pull your shoulder out of the socket and there's nothing I can do about that and I was like thanks I guess like <laughs> you know, like meaning that under anesthesia my arm my shoulder socket is so loose that my shoulder just slips out um, and it does slip out slightly like subluxing which is a partial dislocation if I right, lie on my right side at all so um, but it doesn't hurt at this point because it does it so much but anyway if it did dislocate completely that would hurt so anyway these kind of things this has happened for years and years and years and you know what am I supposed to do if I don't know why it's happening and when the doctor says, well, I, I, I don't know what to do, your shoulder comes out, but you know, it's like, what do you do? Literally, what do you do? So it took me the last three years of trying to see someone and get this diagnosis because I thought maybe I had it. Um, and I finally did. So I'm really grateful because it means I'm gonna be able to get more support. I'm icing my hands right now. Um, I'm gonna go see the hand surgeon and I'm going to get my vagus nerve stimulator removed because I can't have an MRI of my neck until then. So lots of good stuff happening. <laughs> Yay! Lots of things that needed to happen a long time ago. So I'm really grateful for that. And just wanted to give you guys the update. And uh, if you want to know more about hypermobility and hypermobile EDS slash hypermobility spectrum disorder, um, I will be happy to tell you more or make a video about it.